The Ages by William Cullen Bryant. Read for LibriVox.org by Cynthia Moyer. When to the common rest that crowns our days, called in the noon of life the good man goes, or full of years and ripe in wisdom, lays his silver temples in their last repose, when o'er the buds of youth the death wind blows and blights the fairest, when our bitter tears stream as the eyes of those that love us close. We think on what they were, with many fears, lest goodness die with them, and leave the coming years. And therefore to our hearts the days gone by, when lived the honoured sage whose death we wept, and the soft virtues beamed from many an eye, and beat in many a heart that long has slept like spots of earth where angel feet have stepped are holy and high dreaming bards have told of times when worth was crowned and faith was kept ere friendship grew a snare or love waxed cold those pure and happy times the golden days of old peace to the just man's memory let it grow greener with years, and blossom through the flight of ages, let the mimic canvas show his calm benevolent features, let the light stream on his deeds of love that shunned the sight of all but heaven, and in the book of fame the glorious record of his virtues write, and hold it up to men, and bid them claim a palm like his, and catch from him the hallowed flame. But, oh, despair not of their fate who rise to dwell upon the earth when we withdraw. Lo, the same shaft by which the righteous dies strikes through the wretch that scoffed at mercy's law and trod his brethren down and felt no awe of him who will avenge them, stainless worth, such as the sternest age of virtue saw, ripens, meanwhile, till time shall call it forth, from the low modest shade, to light and bless the earth. Has nature, in her calm majestic march, faltered with age at last? Does the bright sun grow dim in heaven, or in their far blue arch, sparkle the crowd of stars when day is done, less brightly, when the dew-lipped spring comes on, breathes she with airs less soft, or scents the sky with flowers less fair than when her reign begun? Does prodigal autumn to our age deny the plenty that once swelled beneath his sober eye. Look on this beautiful world, and read the truth in her fair page. See, every season brings new change to her of everlasting youth. Still the green soil with joyous living things swarms, the wide air is full of joyous wings, and myriads still are happy in the sleep of ocean's azure gulfs, and where he flings the restless surge, eternal love doth keep in his complacent arms the earth, the air, the deep. Will then the merciful one, who stamped our race with his own image, and who gave them sway o'er earth, and the glad dwellers on her face, now that our swarming nations far away are spread where'er the moist earth drinks the day, forget the ancient care that taught and nursed his latest offspring, will he quench the ray infused by his own forming smile at first, 
and leave a work so fair, all blighted and accursed? Oh, no, a thousand cheerful omens give hope of yet happier days, whose dawn is nigh. He who has tamed the elements shall not live the slave of his own passions. He whose eye unwinds the eternal dances of the sky, and in the abyss of brightness dares to span the sun's broad circle, rising yet more high in God's magnificent works his will shall scan, and love and peace shall make their paradise with man. Sit at the feet of history, through the night of years the steps of virtue she shall trace, and show the earlier ages where her sight can pierce the eternal shadows o'er their face when from the genial cradle of our race went forth the tribes of men their pleasant lot to choose where palm groves cooled their dwelling place or freshening rivers ran and there forgot the truth of heaven and kneeled to gods that heard them not then waited not the murderer for the night but smote his brother down in the bright day and he who felt the wrong and had the might his own avenger girt himself to slay beside the path the unburied carcass lay the shepherd by the fountains of the glen fled while the robber swept his flock away and slew his babes the sick untended then languished in the damp shade and died afar from men but misery brought in love in passion's strife man gave his heart to mercy pleading long and sought out gentle deeds to gladden life the weak against the sons of spoil and wrong, banded and watched their hamlets and grew strong. States rose, and in the shadow of their might the timid rested. To the reverent throng, grave and time-wrinkled men with locks all white, gave laws and judged their strifes, and taught the way of right till bolder spirits seized the rule and nailed on men the yoke that man should never bear and drave them forth to battle lo unveiled the scene of those stern ages what is there a boundless sea of blood and the wild air moans with the crimsoned surges that entomb cities and bannered armies forms that wear the kingly circlet rise amid the gloom or the dark wave and straight are swallowed in its womb those ages have no memory but they left a record in the desert columns strewn on the waste sands and statues fallen and cleft heaped like a host in battle overthrown vast ruins where the mountain's ribs of stone were hewn into a city streets that spread in the dark earth where never breath has blown of heaven's sweet air nor foot of man dares tread the long and perilous ways the cities of the dead and tombs of monarchs to the clouds uppiled they perished but the eternal tombs remain, and the black precipice, abrupt and wild, pierced by long toil and hollowed to a fane, huge piers and frowning forms of gods sustain the everlasting arches, dark and wide, like the night heaven when clouds are black with rain. But idly skill was tasked and strength was plied, all was the work of slaves to swell a despot's pride and virtue cannot dwell with slaves nor reign or those who cower to take a tyrant's yoke 
she left the downtrod nations in disdain and flew to greece when liberty awoke new-born amid those glorious vales and broke sceptre and chain with her fair youthful hands as rocks are shivered in the thunder-stroke and lo in full-grown strength an empire stands of leagued and rival states the wonder of the lands o greece thy flourishing cities were a spoil unto each other thy hard hand oppressed and crushed the helpless thou didst make thy soil drunk with the blood of those that loved thee best and thou didst drive from thy unnatural breast thy just and brave to die in distant climes earth shuddered at thy deeds and sighed for rest from thine abominations after times that yet shall read thy tale will tremble at thy crimes yet there was that within thee which has saved thy glory and redeemed thy blotted name the story of thy better deeds engraved on fame's unmouldering pillar puts to shame our chiller virtue the high art to tame the whirlwind of the passions was thy own and the pure ray that from thy bosom came far over many a land and age has shone and mingles with the light that beams from god's own throne and rome thy sterner younger sister she who awed the world with her imperial frown rome drew the spirit of her race from thee the rival of thy shame and thy renown yet her degenerate children sold the crown of earth's wide kingdoms to a line of slaves guilt reigned and woe with guilt and plagues came down till the north broke its floodgates and the waves whelmed the degraded race and weltered o'er their graves vainly that ray of brightness from above that shone around the galilean lake the light of hope the leading star of love struggled the darkness of that day to break even its own faithless guardians strove to slake in fogs of earth the pure ethereal flame and priestly hands for jesus's blessed sake were red with blood and charity became in that stern war of forms a mockery and a name they triumphed and less bloody rites were kept within the quiet of the convent cell the well-fed inmates pattered prayer and slept and sinned and liked their easy penance well where pleasant was the spot for men to dwell amid its fair broad lands the abbey lay sheltering dark orgies that were shame to tell and cowled and barefoot beggars swarmed the way all in their convent weeds of black and white and gray oh sweetly the returning muses strain swelled over that famed stream whose gentle tide in their bright lap the etrurian vales detain sweet as when winter storms have ceased to chide and all the new-leaved woods resounding wide send out wild hymns upon the scented air lo to the smiling arno's classic side the emulous nations of the west repair and kindle their quenched urns and drink fresh spirit there still heaven deferred the hour ordained to rend from saintly rottenness the sacred stole and cowl and worshipped shrine could still defend the wretch with felon stains upon his soul and crimes were set to sale and hard his dole who could not bribe a passage to the skies and vice beneath the mitre's kind control sinned gaily on 
and grew to giant size, shielded by priestly power, and watched by priestly eyes. At last the earthquake came, the shock that hurled to dust in many fragments dashed and strown the throne whose roots were in another world and whose far-stretching shadow awed our own. From many a proud monastic pile or throne, fear-struck the hooded inmates rushed and fled. The web that for a thousand years had grown or prostrate Europe in that day of dread crumbled and fell as fire dissolves the flaxen thread. The spirit of that day is still awake, and spreads himself and shall not sleep again. But through the idle mesh of power shall break, like billows o'er the Asian monarch's chain, till men are filled with him, and feel how vain, instead of the pure heart and innocent hands, are all the proud and pompous modes to gain the smile of heaven, till a new age expands its white and holy wings above the peaceful lands. For look again on the past years, behold, how like the nightmare's dreams have flown away horrible forms of worship that, of old, held o'er the shuddering realm's unquestioned sway. See crimes that feared not once the eye of day rooted from men without a name or place see nations blotted out from earth to pay the forfeit of deep guilt with glad embrace the fair disburdened lands welcome a nobler race thus errors monstrous shapes from earth are driven they fade they fly but truth survives their flight Earth has no shades to quench that beam of heaven. Each ray that shone in early time to light the faltering footstep in the path of right. Each gleam of clearer brightness shed to aid in man's maturer day his bolder sight. All blended like the rainbow's radiant braid, pour yet and still shall pour the blaze that cannot fade. Late from this western shore that morning chased the deep and ancient night which through its shroud o'er the green land of groves, the beautiful waste, nurse of full streams, and lifter up of proud, sky-mingling mountains that o'erlook the cloud. Erewhile where yon gay spires their brightness rear, trees waved and the brown hunters shouts were loud amid the forest and the bounding deer fled at the glancing plume and the gaunt wolf yelled near and where his willing waves yon bright blue bay sends up to kiss his decorated brim and cradles in his soft embrace the gay young group of grassy islands born of him and crowding nigh, or in the distance dim, lifts the white throng of sails that bear or bring the commerce of the world, with tawny limb, and belt and beads in sunlight glistening, the savage urged his skiff, like wild bird on the wing. Then all this youthful paradise around, and all the broad and boundless mainland lay, cooled by the interminable wood that frowned o'er mount and vale, where never summer ray glanced till the strong tornado broke his way through the grey giants of the sylvan wild. Yet many a sheltered glade with blossoms gay beneath the showery sky and sunshine mild within the shaggy arms of that dark forest smiled. There stood the Indian hamlet, there the lake spread its blue sheet that flashed with many an oar, where the brown otter plunged him from the brake, and the deer drank, as the light gale flew o'er 
the twinkling maize field rustled on the shore and while that spot so wild and lone and fair a look of glad and guiltless beauty wore and peace was on the earth and in the air the warrior lit the pile and bound his captive there not unavenged the foeman from the wood beheld the deed and when the midnight shade was stillest gorged his battle-axe with blood all died the wailing babe the shrinking maid and in the flood of fire that scathed the glade the roofs went down but deep the silence grew when on the dewy woods the day-beam played no more the cabin smokes rose wreathed and blue and ever by their lake lay moored the bark canoe look now abroad another race has filled these populous borders wide the wood recedes and towns shoot up and fertile realms are tilled the land is full of harvests and green meads streams numberless that many a fountain feeds shine disembowered and give to sun and breeze their virgin waters the full region leads new colonies forth that toward the western seas spread like a rapid flame among the autumnal trees here the free spirit of mankind at length throws its last fetters off and who shall place a limit to the giant's unchained strength or curb his swiftness in the forward race on like the comet's way through infinite space stretches the long untravelled path of light into the depths of ages we may trace afar the brightening glory of its flight till the receding rays are lost to human sight europe is given a prey to sterner fates and writhes in shackles strong the arms that chain to earth her struggling multitude of states she too is strong and might not chafe in vain against them but might cast to earth the train that trample her and break their iron net yes she shall look on brighter days and gain the meed of worthier deeds the moment set to rescue and raise up draws near but is not yet but thou my country thou shalt never fall save with thy children thy maternal care thy lavish love thy blessings showered on all these are thy fetters seas and stormy air are the wide barrier of thy borders where among thy gallant sons who guard thee well thou laughst at enemies who shall then declare the date of thy deep founded strength or tell how happy in thy lap the sons of men shall dwell end of poem this recording is in the public domain anthem for doomed youth by wilfred owen read for librivox.org by winston tharp what passing bells for these who die as cattle only the monstrous anger of the guns only the stuttering rifles rapid rattle can patter out their hasty orisons no mockeries for them no prayers no bells nor any voice of mourning save the choirs the shrill demented choirs of wailing shells and bugles calling for them from sad shires what candles may be held to speed them all not in the hands of boys but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes the pallor of girls brows shall be their pall their flowers the tenderness of patient minds and each slow dusk a drawing down of blinds and a poem 
This recording is in the public domain. The Autumn by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King Go, sit upon the lofty hill, and turn your eyes around, Where waving woods and waters wild do hymn an autumn sound. The summer sun is faint on them, the summer flowers depart, Sit still, as all transformed to stone, Except your musing heart. How there you sat in summer time, May yet be in your mind, And how you heard the greenwood sing, Beneath the freshening wind. Though the same wind now blows around, You would its blast recall, for every breath that stirs the trees Doth cause a leaf to fall. O oh, like that wind is all the mirth That flesh and dust impart, We cannot bear its visitings When change is on the heart. Gay words and jests may make us smile When sorrow is asleep, But other things must make us smile when sorrow bids us weep. The dearest hands that clasp our hands, their presence may be o'er. The dearest voice that meets our ear, that tone may come no more. Youth fades, and then the joys of youth, which once refreshed our mind, shall come as on those sighing woods, the chilling autumn wind. Hear not the wind, view not the woods, Look out o'er vale and hill. In spring the sky encircled them, The sky is round them still. Come autumn scathe, come winter's cold, Come change and human fate. Whatever prospect heaven doth bound Can ne'er be desolate. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Enthusiast by William Whitehead Read for LibriVox.org by Cynthia Moyer Once I remember well the day, T'was ere the blooming sweets of May Had lost their freshest hues, When every flower on every hill, in every vale had drank its fill of sunshine and of dews. In short, t'was that sweet season's prime, when spring gives up the reins of time to summer's glowing hand, and doubting mortals hardly know by whose command the breezes blow which fan the smiling land. T'was then Beside a greenwood shade, which clothed a lawn's aspiring head, I urged my devious way, with loitering steps, regardless where, so soft, so genial was the air, so wondrous bright the day. And now my eyes with transport rove o'er all the blue expanse above, unbroken by a cloud. And now beneath delighted pass, Where winding through the deep green grass, A full-brimmed river flowed. I stop, I gaze, in accents rude, To thee, serenest solitude, Bursts forth the unbidden lay. Begone, vile world, the learned, the wise, The great, the busy, I despise and pity, even the gay. These, these are joys alone, I cry. Tis here, divine philosophy, thou deign'st to fix thy throne. Here contemplation points the road through nature's charms to nature's God. These, these are joys alone. 
adieu ye vain low-thoughted cares ye human hopes and human fears ye pleasures and ye pains while thus i spake o'er all my soul a philosophic calmness stole a stoic stillness reigns the tyrant passions all subside fear anger pity shame and pride no more my bosom move yet still i felt or seemed to feel a kind of visionary zeal of universal love when lo a voice a voice i hear twas reason whispered in my ear these monitory strains what mean'st thou man wouldst thou unbind the ties which constitute thy kind the pleasures and the pains the same almighty power unseen who spreads the gay or solemn scene to contemplation's eye fixed every movement of the soul taught every wish its destined goal and quickened every joy he bids the tyrant passions rage he bids them war eternal wage and combat each his foe till from dissensions concords rise and beauties from deformities and happiness from woe art thou not man and darest thou find a bliss which leans not to mankind presumptuous thought and vain each bliss unshared is unenjoyed each power is weak unless employed some social good to gain shall light and shade and warmth and air with those exalted joys compare which active virtue feels when oil she drags as lawful prize contempt and indolence and vice at her triumphant wheels as rest to labor still succeeds to man whilst virtue's glorious deeds employ his toilsome day this fair variety of things are merely life's refreshing springs to soothe him on his way enthusiast go unstring thy lyre in vain thou sing'st if none admire how sweet soe'er the strain and is not thy o'erflowing mind unless thou mixest with thy kind benevolent in vain enthusiast go try every sense if not thy bliss thy excellence thou yet hast learned to scan at least thy wants thy weakness know and see them all uniting show that man was made for man end of poem this recording is in the public domain From the Upland to the Sea by William Morris Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Shall we wake one morn of spring, Glad at heart of everything, Yet pensive with the thoughts of eve? Then the white house shall we leave, Past the windflowers and the bays, Though the garth and go our ways, Wandering down among the meads, Till our very joyance needs, Rest at last, till we shall come to that sun god's lonely home lonely on the hillside gray whence the sheep have gone away lonely till the feast time is when with prayer and praise of bliss thither comes the countryside there a while shall we abide sitting low down in the porch by that image with the torch thy one white hand laid upon the black pillar that was one from the far-off indian mine and my hand nigh touching thine but not touching and thy gown fair with spring flowers cast adorn from thy bosom and thy brow there the southwest wind shall blow 
though thine air to reach my cheek, as thou sittest, nor mayest speak, nor mayst move the hand I kiss for the very depth of bliss. Nay, nor turn thine eyes to me than desire of the great sea, nigh e now, but all unheard, in the hearts of us is stirred, and we rise, we twain at least, and the daffodils downcast. Feel thy feet, and we are gone from the lonely sun-crowned one. Then the meads fade at our back, and the spring day gins to lack. That fresh hope that once it had, but we twain grow yet more glad, and apart no more may go, when the grassy slope and low dieth in the shingly sand, then we wander hand in hand by the edges of the sea, and I weary more for thee than if far apart we were with a space of desert drear. Twixt thy lips and mine, O love, ah, my joy, my joy thereof. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Futility by Wilfred Owen Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp Move him into the sun. Gently its touch awoke him once, at home, whispering of fields unsown. Always it woke him, even in France, until this morning and this snow. If anything might rouse him now, the kind old sun will know. Think how it wakes the seeds. Woke once the clays of a cold star. Our limbs so dear achieved, our sides full nerved, still warm, too hard to stir. Was it for this the clay grew tall? Oh, what made fatuous sunbeams toil to break earth's sleep at all? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Gift to Sing by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Kyle Sometimes the mist overhangs my path, and blackening clouds about me cling. But, oh, I have a magic way to turn the gloom to cheerful day. I softly sing. And if the way grows darker still, shadowed by sorrow's somber wing, with glad defiance in my throat, I pierce the darkness with a note, and sing and sing. I brood not over the broken past, nor dread whatever time may bring. No nights are dark, no days are long, and in my heart there swells a song, and I can sing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Hall and the Wood by William Morris Read for LibriVox.org by Chris T'was in the winter dwindling tide, when July days were done, Sir Rath of Greenhouse gan to ride in the earliest of the sun. He left the white-walled burg behind. He rode amidst the wheat, the westland gotten and blue kind across the acres sweet. Then rose his heart and cleared his brow, and slow he rode the way. And then it was, so it is now, not all hath worn away. So came he to the long green lane that leadeth to the ford, and saw the sickle by the wain, shane bright as any sword. The brown carols slayed twixt draught and draught, and murmuring stood aloof. But one spake out when he had laughed, God bless the greenwood roof. Then o'er the ford and up he fared, and lo, the happy hills and the mountain dale by summer cleared, that oft the winter fills. Then forth he rode by Peter's gate, and smiled and said aloud, No more a day doth the prior wait, while stands the tower and proud. There leaned a knight on the gateway side, in armor white and wan, and after the heels of the horse he cried, God keep the hunted man. Then quoth Sir Raffy, Amen, Amen, 
for he deemed the word was good. But never a while he lingered then, till he reached the nether wood. He rode by ash, he rode by oak, he rode the thicket round, and heard no woodman strike a stroke, no wandering wife he found. He rode the wet, he rode the dry, he rode the grassy glade. At wood end yet the sun was high, and his heart was unafraid. There on the bent his rein he drew, and looked o'er field and fold, o'er all the merry meads he knew, beneath the mountains old. He gazed across to the good green hoe, as he smelt the sun-worn sword. Then his face grew pale from chin to brow, and he cried, God save the sword! For there beyond the winding way, above the orchard's green, stood up the ancient gables gray, with near a roof between. His naked blade in hand he had, o'er rough and smooth he rode, till he stood where once his heart was glad, amidst his old abode. Across the hearth a tie-beam lay, unmoved a weary while, the flame that clomb the ashar gray had burned it red as tile. The sparrows bickering on the floor fled at his entering in, the swift blew past the empty door, his winged meat to win. Red apples from the tall old tree, o'er the walls rent were shed. Thence oft a little lad would he look down upon the lead. There turned the cheeping chaffinch now, and feared no burning child. Though the shot window thrust a bow of garden rose run wild, he looked to right, he looked to left and down to the cold gray hearth, where lay an axe with half-burned heft, amidst the ashen darth. He caught it up and cast it wide, against the gable wall. Then to the dais did he stride, o'er beam and bench and all. Amidst there yet the high seat stood, where erst his sires had sat, and the mighty board of oak and wood, the fire had stayed thereat. Then through the red wrath of his eyne, he saw a sheathed sword, laid thwart that wasted field of wine, amidmost of the board. And by the hilts a slughorn lay, and there beside a scroll, he caught it up and turned away from the layland of the bowl. Then with the sobbing grief he strove, for he saw his name thereon and the heart within his breast uphove, as the pen's tale now he won. O oh, Raph, my love of long ago, draw forth thy father's blade, and blow the horn for friend and foe, and the good green wood to aid. He turned and took the slughorn up, and set it to his mouth, and o'er that meadow of the cup, blew east and west and south. He drew the sword from out the sheath, and shook the fellow brand, and there a while with bated breath and hearkening ear did stand. Him seemed the horn's voice he might hear, or the wind that blew o'er all. Him seemed that footsteps drew anear, or the bows shook round the hall. Him seemed he heard a voice he knew, or a dream of while agone. Him seemed bright raiment towards him drew, or bright the sun set shone. She stood before him face to face, with the sunbeam thwart her hand, as on the gold of the holy place the painted angels stand. With many a kiss she closed his eyes, she kissed him cheek and chin. E'en so, in the painted paradise, are earth's folk welcomed in. There in the door the green coat stood, o'er the bows went up the cry. O welcome, Raph, to the free greenwood, with us to live and die. It was Bill and Bo by the high seat stood, and they cried above the bows, Now welcome, Rafe, to the good greenwood, and welcome Kate the rose. White, white in the moon is the woodland plash, white is the woodland glade. Forth when those twain from oak to ash, with light hearts unafraid, the summer moon high o'er the hill, 
all silver white is she, and Sir Raffy's good men, with bow and bill, they go by two and three. In the fair green wood, where lurks no fear, where the king's writ runneth not, there dwell they, friends and fellows dear, while summer days are hot. And when the leaf room from the oak tree falls, and winds blow rough and strong, with the carls of the woodland thorps and halls, they dwell and fear no wrong. And there the merry yule they make, and see the winter wane, and fain are they for true love's sake, and the folk thereby are fain, for the ploughing carl and the slaying herd, Flee never for Sir Rath, no barefoot maiden wends afeard, and she deems the thicket safe. But sore a dread to the chapmen ride, wide round the wood they go, and the judge and the surgeons wander wide, lest they pled before the bow. Well learned and wise is Sir Rath's good sword, and straight the arrows fly, and they find the coat of many a lord, and the crest that riddeth high. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Heraclitus. A translation by William Corey of a poem by Kalimachos. Read for LibriVox.org by Patrick Wallace. They told me, Heraclitus, they told me you were dead. They brought me bitter news to hear and bitter tears to shed. I wept as I remembered how often you and I had tired the sun with talking and sent him down the sky. And now that thou art lying, my dear old Carrion guest, a handful of grey ashes long, long ago at rest, still are thy pleasant voices, thy nightingales, awake. For death he taketh all away, but them he cannot take. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. The Land of Beyond by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Jeanette Brown. Have ever you heard of the Land of Beyond that dreams at the gates of the day? Alluring it lies at the skirts of the skies and ever so far away. Alluring it calls, O ye the yoke galls, and ye of the trail over fond. With saddle and pack, by paddle and track, let us go to the land of beyond. Have ever you stood where the silences brood, and vast the horizons begin? At the dawn of the day to behold far away the goal you would strive for and win? Yet ah, in the night, when you gain to the height with the vast pool of heaven's star spawned, afar and a gleam like a valley of dream still mocks you a land of beyond. Thank God there is always a land of beyond for us who are true to the trail, a vision to seek, a beckoning peak, a farness that never will fail, a pride in our soul that mocks at a goal, a manhood that irks at a bond, and try how we will unattainable still, behold it our land of beyond. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lassitude by Matilda Blind Read for LibriVox.org by Amanda Brewer in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I laid me down beside the sea, endless in blue monotony. The clouds were anchored in the sky, sometimes a sail went idling by. Upon the shingles on the beach, gray linen was spread out to bleach, and gently with a gentle swell the languid ripples rose and fell. A fisher boy in level line cast stone by stone into the brine. Methought I too might do as he and cast my sorrows on the sea. The old, old sorrows in a heap dropped heavily into the deep. But with its sorrow on that day my heart itself was cast away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Lepanto by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Matthew Knight. White fonts falling in the courts of the sun, and the Sultan of Byzantium is smiling as they run. There is laughter like the fountains in that face of all men feared. It stirs the forest darkness, the darkness of his beard. It curls the blood-red crescent, the crescent of his lips, for the inmost sea of all the earth is shaken with his ships. They have dared the white republics up the capes of Italy. They've dashed the Adriatic round the line of the sea. And the Pope has cast his arms abroad for agony and loss, and called the kings of Christendom for swords about the cross. The cold Queen of England is looking in the glass. The shadow of the Valwar is yawning at the mass. From evening isles, fantastical rings faint the Spanish gun. And the Lord upon the golden horn is laughing in the sun. Dim drums throbbing in the hills half heard, Where only on a nameless throne a crownless prince has stirred. Where, risen from a doubtful seat and half a tainted stall, The last knight of Europe takes weapons from the wall. The last and lingering troubadour to whom the bird has sung, That once went singing southward when all the world was young. In that enormous silence, tiny and unafraid, Comes up along a winding road the noise of the crusade. Strong gongs groaning as the guns boom far, Don John of Austria is going to the war. Stiff flags straining in the night blasts cold, In the gloom black purple, in the glint old gold. Torchlight crimson on the copper kettle drums, Then the tuckets, then the trumpets, then the cannon, as he comes. Don John laughing in the brave beard curled, Spurning of his syrups like the thrones of all the world, Holding his head up for a flag of all the free, Love light of Spain, hurrah! Death light of Africa, Don John of Austria is riding to the sea. Mahound is in his paradise above the evening star. Don John of Austria is going to the war. He moves a mighty turban on the timeless hoary's knees. His turban that is woven of the sunsets and the seas. He shakes the peacock gardens as he rises from his ease. And he strides among the treetops and is taller than the trees. And his voice through all the garden is a thunder sent to bring black Azrael and Ariel and Ammon on the wing. Giants and the genie, multiplex of wing and eye, whose strong obedience broke the sky when Solomon was king. They rush in red and purple from the red clouds of the morn, from the temples where the yellow gods shut up their eyes in scorn. They rise in green robes roaring from the green hells of the sea, where fallen skies and evil hues and eyeless creatures be. On them the sea valves cluster and the grey sea forests curl, splashed with a splendid sickness, the sickness of the pearl. They swell in sapphire smoke out of the blue cracks of the ground. They gather and they wonder and give worship to my hound. And he saith, Break up the mountains where the hermit folk can hide, and sift the red and silver sands lest bone of saint abide, and chase the guyors flying night and day, not giving rest, for that it was our trouble comes again out of the west. We have set the seal of Solomon on all things under sun, of knowledge and of sorrow and endurance of things done, but a noise is in the mountains, in the mountains, and I know, the voice that shook our palaces four hundred years ago. It is he that saith not kismet, it is he that knows not fate, it is Richard, it is Raymond, it is Godfrey at the gate. It is he whose loss is laughter when he counts the wager worth, put down your feet upon him, that our peace be on the earth. For he heard drums groaning, and he heard guns jar. Don John of Austria is going to the war. Sudden and still, hurrah, bolt from Iberia. Don John of Austria is gone by Alcala. St. Michael's on his mountain in the sea roads of the north. Don John of Austria is girt and going forth. Where the grey seas glitter and the sharp tides shift and the sea folk labour and the red sails lift. He shakes his lance of iron and he claps his wings of stone. The noise has gone through Normandy. The noise is gone alone. The north is full of tangled things and texts and aching eyes, and dead is all the innocence of anger and surprise, and Christian killeth Christian in a narrow dusty room, and Christian deadeth Christ that hath a newer face of doom, and Christian hateth the Mary that God kissed in Galilee, but Don John of Austria is riding to the sea. Don John calling through the blast and the eclipse, crying with the trumpet, with the trumpet of his lips, trumpet that saith, Ha! Domino Gloria! Don John of Austria is shouting to the ships. King Philip's in his closet with the fleece about his neck. Don John of Austria is armed upon the deck. The walls are hung with velvet that is black and soft as sin, and little dwarfs creep out of it, and little dwarfs creep in. 
He holds a crystal file that has colours like the moon. He touches and it tingles and he trembles very soon. And his face is as a fungus of a leprous white and grey, like plants in the high houses that are shuttered from the day. And death is in the file and the end of noble work, but Don John of Austria is fired upon the Turk. Don John's hunting and his hounds have bayed, Booms away past Italy, the rumour of his raid. Gun upon gun, ha ha! Gun upon gun, hurrah! Don John of Austria has loosed the cannonade. The Pope was in his chapel before day of battle broke. Don John of Austria is hidden in the smoke. The hidden room in man's house where God sits all the year. The secret window whence the world looks small and very dear. He sees as in a mirror on the monstrous twilight sea the crescent of his cruel ship whose name is Mystery. They fling great shadows forwards, making cross and castle dark. They veil the plumed lines on the galleys of St. Mark. And above the ships are palaces of brown, black-bearded chiefs. And below the ships are prisons, where with multitudinous griefs, Christian captives, sick and sunless, all a labouring race repines, like a race in sunken cities, like a nation in the mines. They are lost like slaves that sweat, and in the skies of morning hung, the stairways of the tallest gods when tyranny was young. They are countless, voiceless, hopeless, as those fallen are fleeing on, before the high king's horses in the granite of Babylon. And many a one grows witless in his quiet room in hell, where a yellow face looks inward through the lattice of his cell, and he finds his god forgotten, and he seeks no more a sign, but Don John of Austria has burst the battle line. Don John, pounding from the slaughter-painted poop, purpling all the ocean like a bloody pirate sloop. Scarlet running o'er on the silvers and the golds, breaking of the hatches up and bursting of the holds, thronging of the thousands of that labour on a sea, white for bliss and blind for sun and stunned for liberty. Viva Hispania, Domino Gloria, Don John of Austria has set his people free. Cervantes on his galley sets the sword back in the sheath. Don John of Austria rides homeward with a wreath, and he sees across a weary land a straggling road in Spain up which a lean and foolish knight forever rides in vain. And he smiles, but not his sultan's smile, and settles back the blade. But Don John of Austria rides home from the crusade. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Little Tree by E. E. Cummings Recorded for LibriVox.org by Mary Zoe Bowden Little tree, little silent Christmas tree, you are so little, you are more like a flower. Who found you in the green forest, and were you very sorry to come away? See, I will comfort you, because you smell so sweetly. I will kiss your cool bark, and hug you safe and tight, just as your mother would. Only, don't be afraid, look. The spangles that sleep all the year in a dark box, dreaming of being taken out and allowed to shine. The balls, the chains, red and gold, the fluffy threads. Put up your little arms, and I'll give them all to you to hold. Every finger shall have its ring, and there won't be a single space dark or unhappy. Then, when you're quite dressed, You'll stand in the window for everyone to see and how they'll stare. Oh, but you'll be very proud. And my little sister and I will take hands and looking up at our beautiful tree, we'll dance and sing Noel, Noel. End of poem. This poem is in the public domain. A Mountain Gateway by Bliss Carman Read for LibriVox.org by Tech Savvy I know a whale where I would go one day When June comes back and all the world once more is glad with summer Deep with shade it lies A mighty cleft in the green bosoming hills A cool, dim gateway to the mountain's heart on either side the wooded slopes come down hemlock and beech and chestnut here and there through the deep forest laurel spreads and gleams pink white as daphne in her loveliness 
that still perfection from the world withdrawn as if the wood gods had arrested their immortal beauty in her breathless flight far overhead against the arching blue gray ledges overhang from dizzy heights scarred by a thousand winters and untamed the road winds in from the broad riverlands luring the happy traveller turn by turn up to the lofty mountains of the sky and where the road runs in the valley's foot through the dark woods the mountain stream comes down singing and dancing all its youth away among the boulders and the shallow runs where sunbeams pierced and mossy tree trunks hang drenched all day long with murmuring sound and spray there light of heart and foot free i would go up to my home among the lasting hills and in my cabin doorway sit me down companioned in that lofty solitude by the wood ghosts of twilight and of peace and in that sweet seclusion i should hear among the cool leafed beeches in the dusk the calm voiced thrushes at their evening hymn so undistraught so rapturous so pure it well might be in wisdom and in joy the seraphs singing at the birth of time the unworn ritual of eternal things end of poem this recording is in the public domain over the wintry threshold by bliss carman read for librivox dot org by tech savvy over the wintry threshold who comes with joy to-day so frail yet so enduring to triumph o'er dismay ah quick her tears are springing and quickly they are dried for sorrow walks before her but gladness walks beside she comes with gusts of laughter the music as it rills with tenderness and sweetness the wisdom of the hills her hands are strong to comfort her heart is quick to heed she knows the signs of sadness she knows the voice of need there is no living creature however poor or small but she will know its trouble and hearken to its call oh well they fare for ever by mighty dreams possessed whose hearts have lain a moment on that eternal breast end of poem this recording is in the public domain a parental ode to my son aged three years and five months by thomas hood read for librivox dot org by noel badrian county offaly ireland thou happy happy elf but stop first let me kiss away that tear thou tiny image of myself my love he's poking peas into his ear thou merry laughing sprite with spirits feather light untouched by sorrow and unsoiled by sin good heavens the child is swallowing a pin thou little tricksy puck with antic toys so funnily bestuck light as the singing bird that wings the air the door the door he'll tumble down the stair thou darling of thy sire why jane he'll set his pinafore afire thou imp of mirth and joy in love's dear chain so strong and bright a link thou idol of thy parents drat the boy there goes my ink thou cherub but of earth fit playfellow for fays by moonlight pale in harmless sport and mirth that dog'll bite him if he pulls its tail 
thou human humming-bee extracting honey from every blossom in the world that blows singing in youth's elysium ever sunny another tumble that's his precious nose thy father's pride and hope he'll break that mirror with that skipping rope with pure heart newly stamped from nature's mint where did he learn that squint thou young domestic dove he'll have that jug off with another shove dear nursling of the hymnal nest are those torn clothes his best little epitome of man he'll climb upon the table that's his plan touched with the beauteous tints of dawning life he's got a knife thou enviable being no storms no clouds in thy blue sky foreseeing play on play on my elfin john toss the light ball bestride the stick i knew so many cakes would make him sick with fancies buoyant as the thistle down prompting the face grotesque and antic brisk with many a lamb-like frisk he's got the scissors snipping at your gown thou pretty opening rose go to your mother child and wipe your nose balmy and breathing music like the south he really brings my heart into my mouth fresh as the morn and brilliant as its star i wish that window had an iron bar bold as the hawk yet gentle as the dove i tell you what my love i cannot write unless he's sent above end of poem this recording is in the public domain the prologue by anne bradstreet read for librivox.org by meredith newman at clark university recorded october of 2012 wordpress.clarku.edu/meneuman to sing of wars of captains and of kings of cities founded commonwealths begun for my mean pen are two superior things or how they all or each their dates have run let poets and historians set these forth my obscure lines shall not so dim their worth but when my wandering eyes and envious heart great bartus's sugared lines do but read o'er fool i do grudge the muses did not part twixt him and me that overfluent store a bartus can do what a bartus will but simple i according to my skill from schoolboy's tongue no rhetoric we expect nor yet a sweet consort from broken strings nor perfect beauty wears a main defect my foolish broken blemished muse so sings and this to mend alas no art is able cause nature made it so irreparable nor can i like that fluent sweet-tongued greek who lisped at first in future time speak plain by art he gladly found what he did seek a full requital of his striving pain art can do much but this maxim's most sure a weak or wounded brain admits no cure i am obnoxious to each carping tongue who says my hand a needle better fits a poet's pen all scorn i should thus wrong for such despite they cast on female wits if what i do prove well it won't advance they'll say it's stolen or else it was by chance but sure the antique greeks were far more mild else of our sex why feign they those nine and poesy made calliope's own child so mongst the rest they place the arts divine but this week not they will full soon untie the greeks did not but play the fools and lie let greeks be greeks and women what they are men have precedency and still excel it is but vain unjustly to wage war men can do best and women know it well preeminence in all and each is yours yet grant some small acknowledgment of ours 
And O oh, ye high-flown quills that soar the skies, And ever with your prey still catch your praise, If e'er you deign these lowly lines your eyes, Give time, or parsley wreath, I ask no bays. This mean and unrefined ore of mine Will make your glistering gold but more to shine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Prophecy by Alfred Lord Tennyson Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King For I dipped into the future, far as human eye could see, Saw the vision of the world, and all the wonder that would be. Saw the heaven fill with commerce, argosies of magic sails, Pilots of the purple twilight, dropping down with costly bales. Heard the heavens fill with shouting, and the rain a ghastly dew, From the nation's airy navies, grappling in the central blue. Far along the world-wide whisper of the south wind rushing warm, With the standards of the people plunging through the thunderstorm, Till the war drum throbbed no longer, and the battle flags were furled, In the parliament of men, the federation of the world. There the common sense of most shall hold a fretful realm in awe, And the kindly earth shall slumber, lapped in universal law. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Rose as Fair as Ever Saw the North by William Brown Read for LibriVox.org by Charlotte Duckett A rose, as fair as ever saw the north, Grew in a little garden all alone. A sweeter flower did nature ne'er put forth, Nor fairer garden yet was never known. The maidens danced around it more and more, And learned bards of it their ditties made. The nimble fairies, by the pale-faced moon, Watered the roots and kissed her pretty shade. But well a day, the gardener careless grew, the maids and fairies both were kept away, And in a drought the caterpillars threw Themselves upon the bud and every spray. God shield the shock, if heaven send no supplies, The fairest blossom of the garden dies. End of poem. This recording's in the public domain. The Seasons by William Cox Bennett Read for LibriVox.org by Noel Badrian, County Offaly, Ireland. A blue-eyed child that sits amid the noon, O'erhung with the laburnum's drooping sprays, Singing her little songs, while softly round, Along the grass the chequered sunshine plays. All beauty that is throned in womanhood, Pacing a summer garden's fountain walks, that stoops to smooth a glossy spaniel down To hide her flushing cheek from one who talks. A happy mother with her fair-faced girls, In whose sweet spring again her youth she sees, With shout and dance and laugh and bound and song, Stripping an autumn orchard's laden trees. An aged woman in a wintry room, Frost on the pane, without the whirling snow, Reading old letters of her far-off youth, Of pleasures past and griefs of long ago. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Songs for the People by Francis E. W. Harper Read for LibriVox.org by Kyle let me make the songs for the people, songs for the old and young, songs to stir like a battle cry wherever they are sung. Not for the clashing of sabres, for carnage nor for strife, but songs to thrill the hearts of men with more abundant life. Let me make the songs for the weary amid life's fever and fret, till hearts shall relax their tension and careworn brows forget. 
Let me sing for little children before their footsteps stray, sweet anthems of love and duty to float o'er life's highway. I would sing for the poor and aged when shadows dim their sight, of the bright and restful mansions where there shall be no night. Our world so worn and weary needs music pure and strong, to hush the jangle and discords of sorrow, pain, and wrong. Music to soothe all its sorrow till war and crime shall cease, and the hearts of men grown tender girdle the world with peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet 29 by William Shakespeare. Recorded by Una Che for LibriVox.org. When in disgrace with fortune and man's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him whose friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope. With what I most enjoy, content at least. Yet in these thoughts, myself almost despising. Happily, I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth, sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered, such wealth brings. And then I scorn to change my state with kings. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Stanzas written on the road between Florence and Pisa by Lord Byron. Read for LibriVox.org by Daniel Vermont. Oh, talk not to me of a name great in story. The days of our youth are the days of our glory. And the myrtle and ivy of sweet two and twenty are worth all your laurels, though ever so plenty. What are garlands and crowns to the brow that is wrinkled? Tis but as a dead flower with maydew besprinkled. Then away with all such from the head that is hoary. What care I for the wreaths that can only give glory? O oh, fame, if I are took delight in thy praises, T'was less for the sake of thy high-sounding phrases Than to see the bright eyes of the dear one discover She thought that I was not unworthy to love her. There chiefly I sought thee, there only I found thee, her glance was the best of the rays that surround thee. When it sparkled or aught that was bright in my story, I knew it was love, and I felt it was glory. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Three Voices by Robert Service Read for LibriVox.org by Amanda Brewer in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania The Three Voices The waves have a story to tell me As I lie on the lonely beach Chanting aloft in the pine tops The wind has a lesson to teach But the stars sing an anthem of glory I cannot put into speech The waves tell of ocean spaces Of hearts that are wild and brave of populous city places, of desolate shores they lave, of men who sally in quest of gold to sink in an ocean grave. The wind is a mighty roamer, he bids me keep me free, clean from the taint of gold lust, hardy and pure as he, cling with my love to nature as a child to the mother knee. But the stars throng out in their glory, and they sing of the God in man, they sing of the mighty master, of the loom his fingers span, where a star or a soul is a part of the whole and weft in the wondrous plan. Here by the campfire's flicker, deep in my blanket curled, 
I long for the peace of the pine gloom when the scroll of the Lord is unfurled, and the wind and the wave are silent, and world is singing to world. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To You by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Capricia Page Whoever you are, I fear you are walking the walks of dreams. I fear these supposed realities are to melt from under your feet and hands. Even now your features, joys, speech, house, trade, manners, troubles, follies, costume, crimes, dissipate away from you. Your true soul and body appear before me. They stand forth out of affairs, out of commerce, shops, law, science, work, forms, clothes, the house, medicine, print, buying, selling, eating, drinking, suffering, dying. Whoever you are, now I place my hand upon you, that you be my poem. I whisper with my lips close to your ear. I have loved many women and men, but I love none better than you. Oh, I have been dilatory and dumb. I should have made my way straight to you long ago. I should have blabbed nothing but you. I should have chanted nothing but you. I will leave all, and come and make hymns of you. None have understood you, but I understand you. None have done justice to you. You have not done justice to yourself. None but have found you imperfect. I only find no imperfection in you. None but would subordinate you. I only am he who will never consent to subordinate you. I only am he who places over you no master, owner, better God beyond what waits intrinsically in yourself. Painters have painted their swarming groups and the center figure of all, from the head of the center figure spreading a nimbus of gold-colored light. But I paint myriads of heads, but paint no head without its nimbus of gold-colored light. From my hand, from the brain of every man and woman it streams, effulgently flowing forever. Oh, I could sing such grandeur and glories about you. You have not known what you are. You have slumbered upon yourself all your life. Your eyelids have been the same as closed most of the time. What you have done returns already in mockeries. Your thrift, knowledge, prayers, if they do not return in mockeries, what is their return? The mockeries are not you. Underneath them and within them, I see you lurk. I pursue you where none else has pursued you. Silence, the desk, the flippant expression, the night, the accustomed routine, if these conceal you from others or from yourself, they do not conceal you from me. The shaved face, the unsteady eye, the impure complexion, if these balk others, they do not balk me. The pert apparel, the deformed attitude, drunkenness, greed, premature death, all these I part aside. There is no endowment in man or woman that is not tallied in you. There is no virtue, no beauty in man or woman, but as good as in you. No pluck, no endurance in others, but as good as in you. No pleasure wanting for others, but an equal pleasure waits for you. As for me, I give nothing to anyone, except I give the like carefully to you. I sing the songs of the glory of none, not God, sooner than I sing the songs of the glory of you. Whoever you are, claim your own at any hazard. These shows of the east and west are tame compared to you. These immense meadows, these interminable rivers, you are immense and interminable as they. These furies, 
elements, storms, motions of nature, throes of apparent dissolution, you are he or she who is master or mistress over them, master or mistress in your own right over nature, elements, pain, passion, dissolution. The hopples fall from your ankles. You find an unfailing sufficiency, old or young, male or female, rude, low, rejected by the rest, whatever you are promulges itself through birth, life, death, burial, the means are provided, nothing is scanted. Through angers, losses, ambition, ignorance, ennui, what you are picks its way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Venus by Adonis's Side by William Brown Read for LibriVox.org by Charlotte Duckett Venus by Adonis's side, crying kissed and kissing cried, wrung her hands and tore her hair, for Adonis dying there. Stay, quoth she, O oh, stay and live, nature surely doth not give, to earth her sweetest flowers, to be seen but some few hours. On his face, still as he bled, for each drop a tear she shed, which she kissed or wiped away, else had drowned him where he lay. Fair Proserpina, quoth she, shall not have thee yet from me, nor my soul to fly begin, while my lips can keep it in. Here she closed again, and some say Apollo would have come, to cure his wounded limb, if she had not smothered him. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When I Heard a Learned Astronomer by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Capricia Page When I heard a learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures, were ranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and the diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I, sitting, heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room. How soon, unaccountable, I became tired and sick, till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself in the mystical, moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.